They got the monopoly on it. But you know what? Don't convince me to start talking about it again, because I've talked about it enough for one day. I don't even remember how I got onto it. <laughs> Sock divers, I don't know. <laughs> it's freelancer time. Helldivers is still so fun. I've got to at least play, like, one op on stream a weekend, even if that's all I play on stream, because it's just such a fucking good game. I can't even talk about the revolution because of Woke. <laughs> it's not even. I can't even talk about the revolution because I'm, I, I, I want to play Freelancer now. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's stop talking about all that, by the way, and go and play Freelancer B-Mod, the most unpolitical um, game ever. A game where, as is still in our mod, as it was in Vanilla, and we've just been building on, um, the fucking system of Space Colorado is embroiled in this insurrection turning into, like, a, a fucking war between the Liberty Navy, sorry, the, 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 the Nation of Liberty, which has a, a fully privatized police force um, that is just locking people up to work in prison factories uh, to fill their quotas to make more money off them, to get more consumer goods out there that they can profit off them for. As meanwhile, the fucking, <laughs> like, the miners who have all lost their jobs um, from Liberty Corporations are, like, fighting their insurrection war against them. <laughs> It's like, it's like all very unpolitical. Freelancer is not a political game, guys. Don't worry. It's not at all a thing you have to worry about when you play Freelancer. There's no politics in it. <laughs> Don't worry. Super apolitical stuff, like... <laughs> Blue Lightning says, that seems pretty apolitical to me. Are there any gay people? That's the only thing that's political. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Ingridon says, I came to the Fallout show to escape woke. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> okay, hang on. The B and B mod stands for bisexual. There you go. Bi mod. <laughs> Speaking of a freelancer mod uh, with confirmed gay in it, gonna play more um, chaos mod. Uh, not tomorrow, I think, but the day after. And you guys remember, that has the LGBT beam in it as a special effect that you can vote for. Lobo says, yo, I heard Matt Berry shows up in Fallout. Yeah, though it's like the first... Um, I put my pirate again. It's like the first time I've seen Matt Berry in something where he was like serious. It was really weird. I've I've never seen Matt Berry even like pretend to be playing like kind of like a serious grounded character. Doesn't have insane quirks before. And he has like a little bit in the Fallout show. And he's like a, just a guy. And it's really fucking weird. It like made me feel uncanny. I did not know how to feel about it. Super strange. <laughs> I, he can do what he wants. I'm not saying don't do it. It's just it made me feel weird. I wasn't ready for it. It was really odd. Uh, what did I want to listen to today? I always listen to Ace Combat. I'm going to put on like, the Battlestar soundtrack today. Where is my, uh, where's my Diaspora soundtrack? Do I have that in my Winamp playlists? I gotta mix up my taste. Ace Combat is great, but I've, I've been listening to it for like five years straight now, and I need to like dilute it with more other albums. No, I need to put this on my Winamp. One sec, I gotta uh, search my motherfucking music library for the Aspora. It's an old Battlestar Galactic one. It has some pretty cool music in it, though, I believe. I think. Battlestar Music with the Deep Drop is excellent. Yeah, I should do both, actually. I should do... Um... I should do a combined playlist. I thought I had one of BSG and Diaspora, because BSG, of course. Diaspora bases its music off BSG, which has, you know, Bear McCurry, incredible music. But, um, I don't see my playlist in Winamp, so I think I... I think if I ever had a BSG playlist, I didn't save it, or it's from, like, ages ago. So it's time to make a new one, I guess. Just scroll on again, like, I missed it, right? Surely. Nope, there really isn't a BSG playlist here. Okay, let's fix that. Let's fix that right now. New playlist. GSG Diaspora. I never played the mod that I'm talking about, by the way, really. I played it like once or twice, but I didn't keep going of it. It was like a... Was it a free space mod? Diaspora. I can't remember what game it's for. I'm gonna look it up. It's gonna annoy me if I don't remember. BSG Diaspora mod. What game was this for? F freeware. Is it not a mod? Is it just its own thing? Diaspora. Shattered Armistice. Free Space 2, it's a Free Space 2 mod, there you go. That was close. Okay. Now, I don't remember which of these bang and which of these are like ambience. 
So I'm probably just going to, like, put everything in Winamp. And I'll just, like, trim the playlist as I go. I'm going to put in the actual BSG playlist, uh, soundtrack, too. Oh, there's some really good BSG tracks. I mean, the whole soundtrack is good, but there's some incredible ones. You know, Freelance actually got me into BSG, funnily enough. Now that I remember, is, um... I actually had... I, I was a weird kid who didn't have any friends. Um, I mean, at that point, I was actually living on my own, but, you know, still weird. I just hadn't heard about Battlestar Galactica yet. Uh, I guess because... Yeah, we're not talking about, we're talking about Tarkov anymore. We're talking about actual BSG now. I guess it was before Netflix, too. Um, hang on. I'm gonna put shit on... I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it just play around, but not on shuffle. No, I'll let it shuffle, fuck it. And... Uh, I only found out about Battlestar Galactic at the time because I joined a Discovery Freelancer role-playing group called the Colonial Republic and they were basically a fan version. They had made a fan version of Battlestar Galactica and based themselves on it in a roleplay server. No one else liked that, of course. Um, but that's what got me into um, Battlestar because I discovered it due to them and then I watched it and I was like, holy fuck, this is great. What is this hangar screen? I thought this was XCOM. <laughs> This is my Xenos I made. You wanna go blow up a mining ship? Load I do. Into cargo hold. Uh, engineer Shen voice. I do! Loaded into cargo hold. I just made this character this morning. I haven't balanced um, Xenos gameplay yet, but I'm getting inspired to. I should have showed you. I should have showed you the new animations my put in. Sorry. Let me get back in. Uh, Milo unlocked these cool animations now when you undock that are different for each base. Look at this. Cool. I think that's rad. I love that. Casinos Alpha 3 7. This is Uray. Oh, sorry. I tapped out at a bad time. I wanted to get my Winamp screen up. So Xenos is the pirates in the system of Colorado. I've described them before as like Space Maga. Um, <laughs> which, you know, if that was all they were, you definitely wouldn't want to hand it to them. Um, they're, they're like a bit of both, I think, in the lore. Like, they're, they're like, xenophobic. Uh, they're, they're like anti, anti-foreigners, basically. Like, they're, they're, they're racist. Um, because they're, they're full lore, as I understand it. And this, this is, this is freelancer vanilla stuff. We, we just advanced a lot of the freelancer lore. Uh, and work of it. And their, their shit is, um... That they're they're like miners who took up arms against liberty because like they lost all their jobs basically and they blame the foreigners for it. They blame like Kusari, um, you know, taking their jobs basically that kind of shit and like the the foreign shipping and stuff. So they become like um, basically pirate gorillas that everybody fucking hates. Um, the anti-vax too. I mean that yeah. <laughs> assumedly, assumedly, <laughs> some of them we assume <laughs> are anti-vax. Um, they're, they're like the principal antagonists uh, in this sector of Colorado as we're doing the mod right now. Um, but yeah, they're they're I, I mean their their goals are I guess to like dismantle liberty. I don't know. I they're, 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 I don't think the video game goes out of its way to like tell you what like the Xenos Charter is. I don't know what like their goals they're trying to achieve are. So we just get to fill that in ourselves. Obsidian says, so wait, despite the name Xenos, they're, they're still humans, just space racist. Yeah, it's actually quite confusing when you first play Freelancer because like you. You, would, you, you see Xenos and you're like, aliens? But then you're like, no, they're just like... <laughs> they're just like racists. <laughs> they're, they're not aliens. I think there's like room for an interesting like... Working with their lore though to make them more than like just being two-dimensional like... Like space bigot jokes basically. Like... I think the... The, the part... I mean, I, I kind of want to do that anyway because like they're, they're like one of the principal factions. They're like one of the two main factions in this system is I think there's like the interesting part to them that's like less fucked up like obviously like the bigotry is just misplaced and stupid because ultimately that's the tragic thing about a group like this in fiction by the way everything I'm about to say we're talking about groups in fiction I'm not like handing it to fucking or, or like going out of my way to sympathize with any fucking real political groups today thank you very much we're just talking about like fiction right it's interesting because it's tragic because it's stupid because their actual suffering is coming from liberty itself, right? Like, it's not the foreigner's fault, it's not Kusari's fault, at least, you know, unless Chris Roberts wrote in a journal somewhere that it is. It's not actually foreigner's fault that, you know, they lost their jobs and that liberty's 
future capitalism corporate hellscape, you know, has them all fucking starving on space stations and, you know, getting fucking exploited and shit, right? But that's where they place their blame. So, there's, like, interesting shit to, like, build on their lore with there. I, I wonder sometimes about, like, you know, forking, forking groups maybe at some point. I think what would be interesting is, like, if players... I shouldn't naval gear so much as just shoot, shoot shit. But I think it'd be interesting at some point to, like, um... Uh, my, my brain's having a stroke, sorry. Uh, oh, lots of cobalt. Um, that's it. To, if you have, like, a healthy multiplayer server of this, to let players take a lot of ownership of the factions, right? Like, it'd be really interesting. I don't think we're gonna run, like, like a roleplay server of this. Like, it's not gonna be, like, you have to roleplay or you're kicked. But I think it's interesting to, like, have those kind of, like, light roleplay immersive elements just inherently in how you run the thing. And I think it would be interesting to have, for example, like, you know, if you have someone who's, like, take Deep Space Engineering, right? That's a, that's a corporation we've got on this, this um, server right now, this, this mod. Let's say that a player joins Deep Space Engineering, fills up their faction ID a lot, is, like, Deep Space Engineering's strongest warrior. They're going out in their repair ship, they're constantly repairing other players and stations, they're mining all this ore, you know, they're stimulating the economy with all their hard labor. They, they are DSE's best player, right? And we notice that as devs, we see that, we see the proof of that. I think it'd be cool then if players are interested when they're in those positions where they've invested in factions to give them like, maybe not even necessarily like just give them control or anything, but like take them into account and offer them the ability to be part of like how that faction story develops. You know what I mean? Arkham says what we're not doing the random mod. No, that's like day after tomorrow. I'm gonna do chaos mod. This is this is our mod B mod that I'm just flying around and shooting. If you want chaos mod story, wait a couple of days for that. That'll be this weekend. Um, yeah, I, like. And I'll, I'll go with what Will said in a second, that's what I'm getting at, yeah. But, like, interesting to, like, let players have that kind of thing where it's like, oh, you know, fucking this guy who's actually pretty high up in DSE, you know, thinks what if DSE was doing this? And then we go, okay, you know, this guy's like, you know, what if we made an investment, we took a risk to put a DSE, you know, outpost in this kind of dangerous frontier system because the mining I've been doing there is so lucrative, I, I need some help with it. And then we put, like, a base there, right? If we like that, we go, okay, here's a base. We agree with your request. We, we spawn them, like, a base... In future versions of the mod, we, we patch that in. You give them, like, um, escorts and mining bases and stuff there. And now it's a thing in the story that's evolved, right? I think that'd be really cool to do. It's kind of like how Helldivers does it. Um, game mastering. You're just game mastering, right? You're, you're involved in an element of game mastering in your design and your updating. Um, which is cool. It's something we can do as we evolve the mod. We can... Because when you have a small scale like this, we're never going to have... Even if we're incredibly popular, a server is capped to 200 players in Freelancer. So... And because it's like a mod for Freelancer, honestly, we're probably never going to have like a ton of players, even if we became wildly successful and, and widespread. So it's pretty easy for us to then be like, kind of look at one person in the community and be like, let's do something surrounding that, you know, that person or that group of people's efforts with this group. And then as Will says, yeah, this is what I'm kind of getting at, because it started talking about Xenos, is as Will says, to explore other angles of their ideology and our breakaway factions that focus more on dismantling liberty instead of bigotry. Exactly. And that's what I think would be really interesting. I think you, you don't want to just change the Xenos itself to be that necessarily unless there was a good reason for it because you don't want to like especially like in fiction not, not in real life but in fiction you don't want to like sand off like all of the shit that you know would be problematic in real life from your story like it is fine to have a group that is misguidedly bigoted that's fine like people like that exist and that's a part of your story um you know as long as you're not a shithead about it like you've been like oh and actually the bigots are right the script says so you know um you know that's fine in fiction Hell is in us. Um, and you don't want to just like sand everything down to be like... I, I would be wary also of the mod of like just coming in and just sanding down all of the lore of like vanilla existing stuff to just be reworked into what we want as well. Not because I'm afraid of like making my own stories, but because I think that would be a disservice to the game's legitimately interesting world and universe. And it also runs the risk then of like you subconscious... Uh, you submitting to your own biases and just making everything kind of like your Sioux world where everything's the way you like it but maybe other players don't and you know the world isn't isn't as good that way so i think probably what would be cool is to yeah have like splinters have like breakaways that's right like basically let's say we have a bunch of players who are playing xenos all the time right like i can see myself playing xenos but i'm not i i don't really want to play a space racist right i imagine a lot of people in my community wouldn't you know even for roleplay you know probably at a certain point 
you, you, you're just not going to really want to do that because it's not what you enjoy, right? You don't want to roleplay a bigot. Or not forever, at least. Maybe you're doing an arc. Maybe you're a real roleplayer. You're doing an arc for a character. Fuck that. That's what I'm talking about, right? Um, I might want to play Xenos, but I might... Because might, might, I might think that, like, the thing about opposing liberty... Yeah, makes sense. And the fucking... The, these miners who have turned to piracy, they, they had it pretty fucking tough and got exploited. Okay. But, you know, cool over the bigotry side. And that's how maybe if you have a bunch of players like that in Xenos who are trying to advance a storyline in that way, maybe you get a breakaway group. Maybe you get, you know, true Xenos and new Xenos. And that would be interesting, I think. It would be cool to be able to, like, evolve based on people interacting with the mod. This is all navel-gazing, because right now, you know, we don't have a player base. But it's fun to navel-gaze sometimes and think about. Just fun to shoot the shit about with you guys as I stream. Um, now I forgot I'm not in the lawful. I need to go and actually get targets, because... The, um, I haven't balanced, is what I started this to saying, for being a pirate yet. I've done all my testing as a lawful, so it's kind of a blind spot in that sense of I haven't intentionally balanced... Um... <laughs> will! Uh, intentionally balanced, like, um, the gameplay for, for their, from their perspective. Um... Which, I, I have to... <laughs> will said... <laughs> Well said, so people who aren't good guys but have either aligned goals or the capacity to help or harm a player make the most interesting NPCs. Yes, yes, exactly, yes. If everyone either just agrees with you or is your ontological enemy, that's boring for a world as well. Absolutely. It's great to have a bunch of different range of people and, and motivations, yes, and ideologies. In fiction. Will also said I want to RP the one alien in Xenos who's like the other alien stole my job. Yeah, the fucking, <laughs> the Xenos who are like the nomads. The nomads have infiltrated society. But it's fucked up though, because if you do the lizard people thing in Freelancer, that's like the plot of the, well... Spoilers. Sorry. Close your ears for 10 seconds. That's the plot of the main game. <laughs> is the nomads are doing that, actually. Um, so that wouldn't even be crazy. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. It's important to have, like, not everyone be, like, a paragon, like, of, ca of a character or, like, an evil character, right? You Like, people have flaws. And while you don't need to, like force anyone in real life to go and like consider hard you know hard, harder kind of thoughts about like you know the, this person is is racist but you know is it because deep down they're just born of a heart full of racism or is it because uh you know they are raised in you know a society and a system and and you know their family and their relatives and everyone in their town and something everyone's you know that's the culture and thus they've raised into that and you know they're misguided you know it's oh they could they could they could be better that's the kind of thing that you know is good to think about if you want to but in real life terms, you know, I'm not going to go and force anyone to do that, especially if they're, you know, the people suffering at the hands of people like that, because that not necessarily your job to care about that or, or think about that. Good if you can think about it and try to try to evaluate that from like an objective stance. Very difficult for a lot of people to do, and not necessary to do in uh, managing your own day-to-day -day life, right? So, <laughs> mediocre says love hearing people's take on the nature versus nurture versus n-word debates. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, setting aside real life for that for that case, in fiction, pretty easy to say that's an interesting thing to delve into. Fiction is interesting when it's like delving into like character motivations uh, and shit like that, right? Like that's what makes things interesting. And you don't have to say like people are, are you know are good for it. you. Don't have to say like, oh you know like, well they got exploited, so the racism is okay then like it's excused. You can make interesting stories um, around flawed characters and factions like that. So it's cool. It's very cool. Or not even flawed, like you know bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shouldn't keep talking about, talking about the ideolo ideology forever, though, because um, I'm not paying attention to the game, and we're doing podcasting again. So, <laughs> rewinding my thought track to the video game. This game is not political. Sorry, I lied. It's not political. Don't make me talk about it again, because I've got like an hour and forty left to play this game. Um, the gameplay. I'm gonna call things incidentally balanced. Hello, Navy. And... Oh, it's a freighter. I'm gonna make a distinction between incidental balance and intentional balance. I've intentionally balanced this mod a fair bit so far for lawful play, but anything you're seeing right now as a pirate is incidental. It, it's not intentional. It's like accidental. Shoot the trade lane. Because it's just kind of how vanilla was when we inherited this. Which is why, as you can see... This, guy's a, this guy doesn't even have guns. This freighter doesn't even have guns, see? No! Don't get away! No! I kind of feel bad though, we don't even have guns. We don't even have cargo. I have no reason to fight you, Navy. You're on the other side of the war in Colorado, but I have literally no, no reason to kill you. I'm gonna leave you. 
what I am going to do is fight a mining ship, I think. Okay, but as a spoiler, hot. Um, no. Uh, the, your, your mileage may vary, but I wouldn't call the nomads hot, no. They're, they're quite jellyfish-like. So if that's what gets you going. Anyway, so yeah, everything that you're seeing as a pirate is incidentally balanced. I haven't really touched any of this intentionally yet, but I'm kind of getting inspired to. Because uh, I was playing around this morning. <laughs> Parker says fighting the miners, not the Navy, sounds pretty political to me. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, and basically, I realized that um, the asymmetrical gameplay is cool and I need to design for it and push it. Because when I first was conceiving everything for this system and this mod, it was going to be like, okay, yeah, like, I'll do the lawful player experience first, because that's most normal to me and the most standard for players. And then, you know, later on, I'll mirror this for the pirates. So it'll be like, okay, you know, how it works in this mod right now is kind of like MMO style. You know, the fields are full of Xenos spawning. And they're like the wild monsters you fight when you go out of town, right? Like, you leave the safe zones of Planet Denver, of Battleship Rio Grande, stuff like that. The trade lanes, the gate lanes. And you go out into the woods and you fight the goblins, that kind of thing. Um, Mark. And I assume I would just do the same for the Xenos at some point and balance it. But I was always like, well, how am I going to balance that? Because then you've got to have every field, every forest, as it were, spawning equal amounts of both Navy and... Uh, Xenos, so that players from both sides can, you know, get that experience of going out and doing their doing their jobs, doing their grinding. And I realized, all I had to do was just play a bit of it this morning and realize, actually, that doesn't need to be the case. Hello, fucking Navy. I need help. Because, um, Xenos and Pirates in general have a much more interesting potential gameplay to push, and that is, like, uh, raiding. Raiding and pirating gameplay. They don't need to be mirrored to the lawful gameplay I've been building. Because what's more interesting about them is that rather than just going to a field and, like, you know, fighting Xenos necessarily, what the Xenos is going to be doing, what you want to be doing as the pirates, is striking targets. Um, the system, when you're lawful, it's uh, kind of in the background. It's like all these things, like trade lane highways, mining ships you fly past and you wave to them, hello. Um, you know, shit like that. Um, Planet Denver is your, your little base. All these little trade convoys going around, that's fine. But then... When you go unlawful, you realize, oh, that shit's all red. Like, that shit's all hostile. I can't go to Denver. I, uh, the trade lanes are my enemies, kind of. You know, the, the mining ships are, are, are bosses I, need, I want to kill. And it's suddenly much more interesting because now, rather than just going and fighting in the woods, it's like, I'm Xenos, I'm going to log on, I'm going to go hit the mining ship. I'm going to go hit the supply depots at Planet Denver. I'm going to go raid convoys in the trade lane. And so you're, you're, it's like being the scavs in Tarkov. It's like being the antagonists you know, in, in the usual PvE game. You have to roll up and just be like, we are we are the monsters in D&D. We're going to come here, we're going to fuck up the the ecosystem. We're the virus in the body, basically. And that's really interesting. Because then you get this, like, interesting, different asymmetric gameplay uh, that's, like, double value out of when you design an interesting system in Freelancer. Because suddenly all the, the highways and lawful bases and installations and planets, suddenly they're targets. They're not just bases and hubs. They're targets now. And that's really interesting. I like it. Though right now, because it's not really, you know, intentionally designed, there isn't much to do. But I was hoping to get, like, um, a few Xenos guys to help me kill the mining ship. I think if I just go attack it, they might show up. Go. Oh, Ajira wants some? I can totally take you guys, right? There's three of them. Are they... They're a trade combo. They shouldn't be fighting me. They should be docking. They're doing both. Oh, it's because they took the lane out. Okay. Whoa, shit! Take out the escorts of Ajira. So Ajira's one of the corpse. No, on my own, I don't really have the firepower to kill the freighter, but I can just, like, fight these corpo guards. Oh, my bad. My bad, decent. Come here, you fucks. Those are light fighters. They're going to be difficult to take care of. But I've got teammates coming up. I got Xenos incoming. I'm gonna mark them so I can keep track of them. I haven't fought light fighters since I did the refactor. Oh, that was Rego. That was Rego. I had that. Destroyed. That's right, Will, exactly. Yeah, that's that's the way. Oh god, take a left fire. Let me let my 
teammates take the heat for a bit. This game of boarding? No, there's no like um, there's no like shooting element or anything. No like boarding. No. Did the rhino get away? The rhino is like holding for his escorts, kinda. That was a, really that rhino should just be fleeing on its own. I can I can make them do that. I can tell like transport AI like. I can I can train the AI in this game to basically just like the transports run while the escorts buy time, which is uh, would be good here because that Rhino should be leaving while the escorts like basically buy in blood the escape for the the Rhino. That's how we used to do it in PvP. Is in this game is if you're an escort like a freelancer escort and pirates attacked, you would generally just try to like run interference, buy some time for the freighter. And then once the freighter had got away because of you busy in the pirates, you two would hit the lane and you would all get out of there basically. You, you generally wouldn't finish the fight with pirates. You'd get out of there before more pirates showed up. Missile away. Oh, nail him with the AC. But uh, th this Rhino's AI isn't set up for that yet, but I'm going to set that up at some point. That's a good idea, I should do. How big can the ships get? I'll show you in a sec. They can get as big as you want. You can mod in whatever size you want. Read the rest of your message in a sec. Some mods in Freelancer have massive cap ships. Eventually I want that, but we're not there for player controllable big caps yet. I want them to have a meaning in the design rather than just be there for cool vector. Okay, now my friend is the transport. Let's go. Let's go for the lane! Stick with the mining ships that will be raiding targets. I'll show you in a second. I'm about to fight one. I would, but then a Jira got me dist distracted. Would there be hidden enemy bases that we save range of pirates? Yeah, I, I undocked from one today. Let's try and hit the lane. Take the lane out. Now let's see if those Xenos are going to come over. The Xenos aren't with me. They don't see this Rhino. Oh, they're coming. If they come over, we can take it together. The Rhino's got no weapons. It's like a civilian transport, essentially. That means it's got no cargo. No, it's got food! And we can take the rookie Ajira uh, trucker pilot hostage and ransom them. Let's do it. <laughs> no, you're not allowed. They're just this poor rhino just like waiting for the trade lane. Their shields are quite tough. Freighter freighter shields are basically balanced to be like way more capacity than a fighter shield, but their regen is similar. So even a lone fighter like me can get through them eventually because their regen isn't that big. If I don't get my full cut this time, I'm gonna be trouble. <laughs> I think that might not happen for you. Okay. What are my pods on? No! No, why'd you move? Suddenly they moved. Come here. I, I don't know if I can hit them with these. No, it's it's too... It's too small a target from this angle. The, the, the Rhino's a bit small to hit with rocket pods. But I can just hit its hull with my main guns. If I get on the broadside, I can beat its ass with the rocket pods, but... It's gonna be hard with how hard it's moving. I need to slow these things down, probably. And make them turn worse. Give them more mass. Just give me the food and nobody gets hurt! Ajira is the company that built the trade lanes. And the gates. Yeah! Give me those 39 chicken nuggets! Oh yeah! Wait, I only got four. Oh, oh, it's like pallets of food. I forgot I changed it to this. It's like four giant pallets of food. Actually, takes up a lot of space. Well, the other, <laughs> the, the other, however much food can stay there. I'm gonna go get the mining ship. Does damage impact the output of individual systems? If you shoot the thrusters, can you slow them down? So that is a system in this game, but we haven't currently got it configured as like a thing we're doing. Um, because by default it's like just annoying in the base game I think where like by default you'll just like randomly missiles and explosions just like blow shit off your ship and you don't really it's just like a random annoying thing that happens to you and it sucks but it is a thing yeah each each piece of equipment can have its own like health pool basically um, and you know explosive resistance and you can blow shit off ships now I don't really want that though I don't want shit to get permanently blown off what I do want is us to be able to build a plugin at some point that works like Star Sector, where you know you have flame outs and like machine gun disabled machine gun online in Star Sector, that kind of thing, where you shoot the component down, it gets hit to zero HP, it gets disabled for a configured amount of time, you can't use it, and then it comes back after, right? That would be really cool, I think, the Star Sector system. 
that would be that would be neat. I would like that. Where is this? Yeah. And and that's if we ever do have big 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 player ships, especially that's I think critical for the design is to have that instead, where. Because then you can balance cap ships to be more interesting. Rather than just being a battleship has like a 5 billion HP health bar. And it's so hard for a single fighter to do any like thing relevant. Because that's not good. Because then it's like, okay, you need a battleship to kill a battleship every time. More interestingly to be like, okay, yeah, a battleship has like 5 billion HP. And a couple of fighters on their own will not kill it. Because that would be stupid. But a couple of fighters on their own can shoot the turrets off. Can shoot, you know, work on the engines, the shields, the radars... Um, all that kind of shit, and they can do meaningful damage that doesn't explode the battleship on their own, but does put it in jeopardy, potentially. Um, that, I think, would be a good balance, and, cause, and causes, like, monetary damage, perhaps, you know? Causes it to go and have to repair. That would be a much more interesting balance immediately for me, when I, if I was to start looking at how to, to do that, basically. Hey, Xenos, come help me with this. Let's go. This mining ship is full of copper! That's our copper! Wait, it's full of silver. Woo! On my list as well is um, giving these guys proper loadouts. They have like a bunch of like lasers and machine gun turrets right now. But I've only just made them destructible and really a thing you fight um, recently. So I need to give them like a proper loadout of like weapons that scare the fuck out of you. It's actually on my docket like this morning was to... One of my things I could work on is to basically do a whole new suite of inspired by real world AA weapons. So like giant telephone sized uh, missiles that will blow you up really fucking quick. Um, you know, shulker like auto cannons and you know, flat cannons, that kind of thing. Smaller like SRMs swarming at you. Stuff like that. Missile sized telephone, sorry, telephone pole. Ah. Um, size like buck missiles. Ah! I basically, like right now you can see it's not that threatening because they're not really, they're very incidentally balanced right now. I want to make these things, uh, maybe not terrifying mining ships, but like especially if you go really like a base, like Denver or Ure, you go into the battleship, you should be like getting fucked up. It should be like DCS, you're flying into like this really like Sam City, you know? It should feel really stressful, I think. And then through that way, we can kind of make it like um, they're kind of like, you know, little boss raids you go on. Like, you get, like, five of your buddies, and you're going to be like, okay, we're going to go raid the mining ship, we're going to go raid the ray base. It'd be really cool. I'm out of missile pods now, though. But maybe more Xenos will come and we'll get this thing. But you can see the, uh, the ballistic guns in general don't really do much damage to the shield either. That's going to that's gonna change. That's one of the main reasons I'm not too threatened right now. I can probably just, like... Do circuits around it, uh, rather than doing attack runs. Do you know to be cooler? Actually, wait. Let me cheat something. Beam aisle foray. You know to be cooler than sitting here and doing that, getting the bombs too. The thing is, it's not a pushover, not just a pushover, just a tedious point of defense platform that would hire you and keep you honest through other navy assets to engage you. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I don't want that as much. In some cases, that's fine. Like, maybe with the mining ship, um, you know, it, it, it does need that support, and then you, you set it up so that, like, Navy does spawn around and support it. But um, definitely with, like, the big bases and the battleships and stuff, it should, no, it should definitely not be, like, just a tedious sort of, like, you know, you've got to kind of move around a bit, but then you're fine. You can just stay here forever. I'd like to make it more like, no, this is bad. Like, you should not be attacking this thing on your own. You're going to fucking die. Like, th those missiles are going to catch you. I'm going to try another weapon that I don't think I've even shown on stream before. I made, like, a year ago. And, uh, never really did. Uh, and that is... I'm going to get rid of the SRM launcher. And I'm going to bring the unguided bomb. Which I need to give explosion resistance. They blow each other up right now. Sympathetic donation. So I can't launch them all at once. We're going to go bomb the mining ship. into cargo into is there a permit for the ships? Um, so th these mining ships will come back on server restart currently. To do any different than that, we need to do technical work. Uh, but we can do random encounters and events, which we're working on right now, where it'll like spawn, you know, right then in that session, in that moment, a mining ship that then you blow that up, you're like, it's not going to come back or anything. It's, it's procedurally spawned, you know? 
Um, move aisle. 5,000. Oh, 80,000. Oh, I'm dead. Danger. Wait, why did that? Oh, I said my name. You don't say your name because that it goes X Y Z and it took Isle for X, so it just put me in the sun. I mean, like player shift, player shift doesn't happen. Oh, right now you just well, as you can see, you respawn. Right now it's very generous because by vanilla you don't even like lose your ammunition; you just lose your cargo. I want to make it so you lose all your ammo at minimum. Uh, and so that you come back with, like, a penalty of either you pay money for dying, or, like, your ship is, like, low health, and you need to... Ideally, you need to pay money to repair your ship, like, it doesn't just come back full health or anything. Because otherwise, you can kind of, like, do what vanilla freelancer multiplayer players do all the time, which is to cheese having low health, but they don't want to repair, they're just, like, flying to a sun and die. Um, which I want to get rid of, but it's not something we've been able to, you know, technically prioritize yet. So, doing it properly now. That's where I wanted to go. Navy armor transport. Ooh. None of these are configured properly yet, so just imagine they've got like juicy cargo on board. It's, it's a navy transport full of prisoners. We're gonna help. It's trying to go to somewhere. <laughs> How much help does it have? I've never fought one of these things before. Because if you consider streaming that FTL one time, it's pretty sick. Um, no, not really, honestly. Not particularly. Can I get some rocket pods on this? <laughs> no. These are so hard to- I could give them like slight guidance I think. They're so hard to hit with other crap wise. Oh, I'm hitting! I'm beating the shit out of them. It's just like looking weird the effect isn't playing properly. See ya. What are they going for that? Absolutely nothing. It's just imagine it was like a prison break, okay? Use your imagination, guys. Anyway, I'm gonna go fight the mining ship was my whole point. I'm probably gonna either play lawful, because that's where the real balance is right now, or I'm gonna, um, mod. I'm probably just gonna play like an hour of fighting lawful, because it's fun. No, prisoners. no, I saved them. Don't worry, I saved them. They're in life pods. Richard Baratrama? No, I never did. This Star Fox mod looks sick. <laughs> yeah, thanks. We've really advanced Star Fox a lot. Imagine it's a fridge-sized lump of expensive loot. Yeah, that shit's in! That shit's in! I'll show you that when we're doing lawful. Jedi says, like, the prison break in the Death Star cell block that the five ran first had to quell? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know enough Star Wars lore. I know what you're talking about. You talking about Luke Skywalker? You talking about Leia? Alright, I'm going in. This time I'm gonna get you, because this time I got... Bomba! Bomba hit? Bomba. Wait. I think again it's like the explosion effects I'm playing today. Let me see. I'm doing the damage. Oh yeah, the explosion is like going off earlier and they're kind of small. That's okay, as long as we do the damage. Even if it doesn't look cool right now. They're meant to have like, uh, they're meant to be visible too. They're meant to have like little cute little reindeer noses on. <laughs> if I slow down, maybe I can see one. No, just like invisible, that's weird. Why are my bombs invisible today? That's odd. I was playing with them this morning and they were working. Strange. I must have fucked something up. Yeah, they're totally invisible. What the fuck? Weird. That's what's happening to the rockets too, maybe. Ah! I like the rocket pods, though. I like having rocket pods and... And like just normal unguided bombs. The mod, it is not hidden that this mod is like very much inspired by actual like aviation, not space fighting. I threw a lot of shit in that's like because of that. That's why we got FFARs, that's why we got unguided bombs. 
That's why we got a bank, that's why we got like, um, certain kinds of gameplay going. Oh god, my cat just jumped into my blinds and scared the fuck out of me. See, I gotta tune this up. Sh now, here's the question. Should I tune this up now on the stream, or should I just go enjoy myself? We could make this thing better right now, instead of me just going on lawful and just dogfighting for an hour and achieving nothing. I could spend right now increasing the weapons, improving the weapons of the mining ship. Or I could just go have fun and play. Because god, the 1v3s are so sick in this field. Do a bit of both, maybe I'll do a bit of both. Maybe I'll do a bit of 1v3ing and then if I feel like it I'll come back and work on this a bit. It's very much getting back on the bike for me. Like, I haven't made a new weapon in a year since I last worked on the mod, basically. But the first time I do it, I'll feel more comfortable doing it again. What would I make first? I'd probably make... I'd probably improve their cannons first. I would give them, like, better defense guns. And then give them better missiles, I think. I, right now, they don't really have any missiles. I'd probably take... Maybe even take the lasers off this thing. Or leave, like, one laser on it. And then... Probably give it a bunch of, like, SRM launchers and have the air just get filled with defensive missiles. Can you check your target computer? Yeah, I'm out of ammo for all my munitions, unfortunately. But I have, like, four Xenos friends, so maybe I'll actually stick here to see the explosion. You can see the, the cool effects of how it, like, starts getting caught on fire. As we start damaging it, I love that in Freelancer. Shit looks cool. Oh, yeah, we're picking up so many Xenos. I guess Navy don't spawn here either, so this is a cinch. Let's eat him up, fuck it. I can't leave all the other Xenos, there's like five of them. Let's get them! That's our silver! They're taking our silver! Good, good, good. Oh fuck, I got hit by a fucking L laser. No! Oh! Shit, the lasers hurt. <laughs> I can't ult that right now, but it's like, okay. For the dogfighting playlist, got, there's the first one. Gotta take Rosalind and Adama out of the dogfighting playlist. Good song, not appropriate. Shield Next song, please. Sure. I gotta make bomber enemies too on the other side of the fence. I gotta make... Finally, I've been meaning to do it for like a year, like I said. I stopped working on the mod. I've always been meaning to give like bomber loadouts to the Xenos so they can have things like me, like bombs and torpedoes and shit. I should do that. I should, uh, they should be paired. I should give them better anti-air weapons, basically. And then I should, in in return, give the Xenos NPC some, uh, some anti-large weapons. You would appreciate real damage. Yeah, we don't want it to be quick. I, I think... Ideally, these things are going to have shields, too. Just like the freighter did. So they'll be, they'll be a tough thing to take on. Will says, I guess my biggest picky space combat as an air combat is you only have to run the engines when you want to go faster and turning banking should require tiny thrusters. Yeah, and it's really easy to drift sideways and, uh, and straight in space. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, we, we're a bit in the middle because we have engine killing because it's great and it's an important part of Freelancer. But we made it less powerful than vanilla uh, in how vanilla works. Where Vanilla is basically exactly what you said, Will. Where vanilla as an arcade game, you do fly around an impulse, but really the meta was to just do this. You would just engine kill all the time, and you would just like thrust when you wanted to change directions, and that was the fastest way to go. Um, because like it, because the thrusters let you go faster than your normal top speed. So by but they had limited fuel. So by doing that, you only had to use your thruster barely, so you never ran out of fuel. So everyone goes top speed all the time. Uh, I didn't like that matter though. In PvP, it was annoying. So in this, we drastically changed the way it works. Thruster does nothing now, which thus makes it so. But, but the ships go way quicker in impulse. So basically just your normal flight is what it, what thrusting was in vanilla. Will says, yeah, the whole notion of a top speed makes no sense in space. Yeah, this game is very unrealistic. Oh, you'll see if this is your first freelancer stream when we fly past the planet. And that's definitely not going away. I, I, I love that in, in freelancer. That's what makes freelancer a good game to me. Um, unlike Star Citizen, which is just, you know, tries to be realistic in ways that are super unfun, in my opinion. Freelancer is very much a, 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 a game game. I love that about it. Give me that silver! Ah! 
Incredon has died. Banter Shrek has died. <laughs> Obsidian Actual has died on the bridge of the mining ship. <laughs> Great job, Zenos. Alright, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. I'm gonna go get my lawful and do some 1v, 1v3s in Silverton. What's going on here? Does Zenos are... Oh, holy shit, what?! Yo, just like organically, while me and the gang were killing that mining ship, 10 kilometers away, the NPCs just started spawning and killing this mining ship. Let's go! It's a Xenos kind of day! Let's get our second DSC mining ship! Get the corporations! Well, this one's got Navy, too. And they're seeing it, and they're flying away. <laughs> Wait, where'd the Navy go? They're like 10k away, like, not my problem. If I was doing yeah, just fuck around on my Xenos character that I made this morning. I think there's a dogfight going on over here. Oh, the new contrails you can, like, see from so far away. That's how I noticed as well. That there was shit going on over here. It looks so cool, the new contrails. The new, like, Ace Combat Cell contrails. I love them. Yo, there's a fucking fight here. Okay. Mark my friendly so I can see them. Let's get into it. Oh, there's supposed to be ferret. Holy fuck, it's just this one for Xenos. Help them. Oh, I have no missiles because I'm a, I'm a bomber loadout. Fuck. Get off my friend! No! I'm gonna get fucking my clock cleaned by the Navy. These guys aren't balanced yet because, again, haven't been playing Xenos. They have, like, fucking lasers and shit. Oh, but I just got one. I guess I'm different. Ugh! Clock clean? Clock clean! Clock clean! Clock! Oh, shit. I gotta dodge, they're gonna laser me. Ugh! Fuck. Fuck, fuck, they're destroying me! Oh my god, the lasers, I'm not gonna last. Death before dishonor. Told you I was gonna get my asterisk cleaned. Yeah, them, them fucking tough. No, the silver. I know the silver. I probably don't need to change though, like, that's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. Because before I was gonna have to be like, oh, you know, like, the navy's too tough. Um, for if you were, uh, what if, what if you just want to play a Xenos player? You know, I gotta make them, their rookie, you know, rookie navy, medium navy, just like the Xenos have easier pickings for, like, tutorializing for new players. But then I was like, I was always gonna be like, but that kind of sucks though, because then, like, it's kind of weird, because the navy wouldn't fly around in, like, a single lone rookie. The navy wouldn't fly around with, like, two rookies in a pair on their own. It's kind of weird. Um, you know, they'd, they'd be in, they're, they're not ragtag like the Xenos, they'd be a lot more organized and doctrined. Um, but now I realize I don't need to change that. It can be more like, as a Xenos, you go out there and your your easier targets are like the corpse. You're fighting like the, the renter cops that work for Ajira and DSC, and you're hitting the vulnerable targets. And it's also fine if Xenos are a completely different gameplay and harder even. Because I realized, yeah, like, I, I don't want to and shouldn't do like Alliance versus Horde. Like, I shouldn't just do like, you know, Scub or Anti-Scub, Home Depot or um, Lowe's. I should do... Um, Instead, yeah, it is fucking scary when the Navy shows up, as it should be, when you're Xenos. It's like, oh shit, here we fucking go. Like, here comes the wing of four, four Navy over, like, all the good shit. Fuck Lowe's. <laughs> Home Depot gamer spotted. <laughs> Pinnika says, the current strongest Navy in the world can also militia forces have been bombed for a decade now. What do you mean? I, I, I missed your context. No, I don't. You're not, you're not a Home Depot gamer? But don't, don't like him Depot ever, but Lowe's sucks? Okay. The hoodies? Okay. Okay, well, well, look, motherfucker. Here in Freelancer, the Navy has L lasers, so... You know, built different. <laughs> I mean, they can't stop the Xenos either, but the Xenos exists. I can't afford this. Shit. Exactly, well, yeah, the Navy should be like 505 scatter. Exactly. Unlike the actual 5 the LPI are kind of weak, honestly. Because they're bullies. They just have, like, Patriot Light Fighters. Well, more on that later. I'm gonna go play my other side of the fence now.
Because I want to get those 1v3s in again. They're so fun. Navy ship should be covered in rust and prone to engine breakdowns. Well, that is the fun thing about the way we're doing it right now. So, gameplay-wise, we're doing that Colorado is the only system in the mod because it's easier to focus on one system at a time to make sure it's good rather than trying to balance 26 systems at once to be polished. And I value having less content in the game at once, but all of that content being polished rather than having 26 things, but who cares? They're all kind of shitty. Um, however, it works in lore interesting as well, because to explain that in lore, our narrative is basically that like a giant ion swarm kind of catastrophe has happened. Oh, look at those LRMs go from the weapons plat. Boy! We kind of have LRMs already. Oh, fuck! Felt that. Felt that in my plums. Um, so basically, long story short, this system is cut off from the rest of Liberty right now, narratively. And that is basically how we can have the Xenos actually advance their interests in this sector and, and score victories, is because you can basically be like, rather than being constantly, a constantly losing joke of an insurgency that every other faction in the game, like, laughs at as like a joke, um, now Liberty here, you can basically say, okay, wait, why is the mining ship mad at me? What? Why are you mad at me? Do I need to like re rejoin the server? Um, basically say that like the Liberty Navy does still outmuscle them like pound for pound and like out out vet training them and everything, but there's not that much Navy here. They're cut off and they can't get reinforcements from New York, so they're working at what they got. They're basically embattled. Whatever cap ships get destroyed or damaged beyond repair in Colorado until the rest of the system is reconnected, that's it. They haven't got anything else. That kind of thing. Colorado has a salvage yard, but not a shipyard, narratively. But we can always change that. We write the story. Yeah, the mining ship's still mad at me. Is it because I haven't marked? Uh-oh. Oh god, wait. Wait, because I spawned in, it spawned in like max enemies because I was in a field. I forgot about that. Repair complete. But, but why is Sierra Man? Planet Denver. Planetary docking cleared. Good luck out there. Dog. Take me back to Silverton. Hopefully the mining ships aren't mad at me, because it's my different character, they've no reason to be mad at me. I think it's just because the server got confused, because I like swap hot swapped characters basically. Because that's who they belong to and they don't hate me. Did I just see someone? Yes, I did just see someone over there. When the contrails bugged. Okay, let's go 1v3. These are fucking hard. I've died to these a few times. Which is a good sign, generally. Where? Alright. I gotta, like, lead him off, lead him off a bit, I think. I'm gonna try to lose, lose their heat a bit. Using the trade lanes as cover. And then we're gonna go in on them. Because I wanna get them all in the same direction so they're not flanking me. Which they're still doing right now. I'm gonna take some hull damage, I think. Oh! These threes are fucking hard! Oh fuck, I'm gonna die so quick. I'll have to hit the lane. I'm getting destroyed. They're on every side of me, you see that? They're flanking the shit out of me. I'm fucked, I gotta hit the lane when it comes back. Which I got destroyed because I use it as cover. Wait for it to return. Oh god. Please, Lane, come back! I think it's back. Hit the lane! Okay, we're gonna run from that one. I was not gamer enough to take on those Xenos. It's all about that initial approach I find of the 1v3s. You've really gotta... You've really gotta cat herd them into the right positions quickly with the AI, I think. Because if you don't, they flank you from all sides and you just never get a break for your shields to rebuild and you just get destroyed. I gotta repair now. Hackable satellite. I don't want to piss the Navy off though, so I'm not gonna do it. What 
is this weird psychedelic BSG pipe track? It's uh, Tartarus. It's a Diaspora. It's a BSG mod soundtrack. So you were right about BSG. It's inspired by BSG. Repair limpets. Yeah, we're doing our repair mines. Our little green babies. For our first aid Shield out in the field. Shield fail. Pernicus says, in the end, capitalism cannibalizes even military industrial capacity to destroy any vestige of skilled labor. And because making things is outmoded, when you can just pretend technology with a 10,000% market for solving your problems. Well, that's what they're talking about. In fiction about liberty. Here's what we were just talking about. Liberty is completely gone to the corporations. Um, Ajira? Ajira, um... Technologies, I believe, is their fool? Yeah. They are literally the only company in the entire universe who knows how to make and maintain the trade lanes and jump gates that super space highway you around systems and send you uh, between other uh, star systems quickly, in interstar system, without it taking like days. Basically, one private corporation controls every road, highway, and like airport on Earth. Um. Yeah, which is cool. Um, super cool. Nothing bad comes from that. Then you have like um, Space Amazon, you have Universal Shipping, who I think did the same thing where they like, basically, they did some crazy shit in their lore. They like started wars and shit. Because they started out doing like. No, it's not Universal Shipping, it's uh, Interspace Commerce. Interspace Commerce, like. used to sell insurance? No, they. They used to lend money, I think, or something? They used to be like a. like a. Universe Bank. And then, like. Rhineland wouldn't do that with them anymore. Because, like, they got pissed off at them for, like, trapping them in really shitty loans or something. And there was, like, a big war about it, and everyone got bankrupted, and Rhineland is still fucked economically and is just destroyed. Because they got, like, baited into... Rhineland got, like, independent. And then they got, like, uh, from from the loans. And then they got, like, baited into basically, like, having a hundred-year war with a gas mining guild in Kusari. Who fucking bodied them, by the way, despite just being, like, a corporation themselves. Versus an entire space nation. And then basically Rhineland got, like, economically bankrupted and has never recovered. And now Interspace Commerce is like, lol. Um, we sell insurance now, by the way. And we make a shitload of money. I think their rumors are like, we, we got out of like the, the loans game because like it was like just wasn't working out, so we do insurance now because it's easier. And makes more money. But I'm paraphrasing. I read the law the other night again to refresh myself on it. A lot of shit I just did not care about as a child is kind of interesting about this game. There's five Xenos coming, I'm gonna fucking die again, fuck! Give me the fuck out of here! <laughs> Wait, where are the mining ships? Can I run to a mining ship? No, they hate me. I'm gonna try to flare off the cruise disruptors, which is not working. There's fucking five of them. I got like a double spawn. Ah! Just get to the trade lanes and just pump it again. It's only 5k away, I can make it. Tassikasu says the space of 55 just needs a few new, new trillion, bro. Trust me, it's gonna provide all the jobs, bro. Yeah, it's great because you can like do Liberty's military industrial complex like that and actually have it in the gameplay in that the Navy ship is really good, but it costs like a hundred thousand credits to repair it when you blow it up. Whereas, you know, other more normal ships could just be like, you know, 20k for instance. Or you can have it be like in the weapons hardpointing system I did, you can have it be like um, you know, the Navy ship is really cool, but it can only mount, like, these specific pieces of expensive proprietary gear. Um, so you have to just buy those. Whereas other ships can, you know, be more, more flexible. Panika says, Beagle, I heard a fun story about the F-35 that can't possibly be true, but I choose to believe it anyways. Export F-35s require a startup that changes daily, and only the US can supply it for Israel. I believe that. That absolutely sounds like a thing they do. Hey, we're building this, like, sick fighter, and we want to make money off it selling to other people, but we don't want them to fight us with it. Yeah, hell yeah, they do that. If someone says, yeah, reading the lore 20 years later in the year of our lore 2024, it really hits different when I was young, and I'm just like, they made this in 2004? Yeah, like, it, I just didn't give a shit as a kid, it just flew over my head, any of the politics. It's just like, okay, the shipping company, oh, the bad Xenos, oh, you know, 
Fucking Space Japan, Space America, blah, blah, blah. There's actually a lot of interesting shit going on in the factions of this game. I mean, don't even start on, you know, fucking Bretonia. You've got, like, the fucking mollies fighting in Space Dublin. Which, you know, the meme is, like, Space IRA, right? But it's actually based on some other thing i never heard of, apparently. The Molly Maguires, which were, uh, like, Irish-American miners who fought against... Basically, Pinkerton basically fought against this, you know, corrupt asshole, cruel tyrant, you know, fat cat. And then the Pink you got the Pinkertons on them and all this shit. There's, like, a lot of cool shit going on like that. Like, you can... You can go to Bretonia, you can be a part of that shit, you know? Back in the good old days before games are political. Yeah, Freelancer is, like, insanely political. In the sense that, like, there is a lot of politics in it. And it's kind of just there in the background, honestly. Like, most of that shit is, like, not even really touched by the main story. Like, like by the main campaign. There's four of me. Fuck. Oh, yeah, because I came here to run and just... Wait, why did I turn around and just shoot one? Oh, the missile! I just decided to kill one of them, I guess? Because I started talking about the mollies and forgot I was running away. <laughs> Let's do it again. If I can take one, I can take I can take another one. But someone says, like, the whole reason the Xenos exists is the death of manufacturing jobs and the privatization of police and calling the space mug is completely accurate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's what's interesting in, in fiction to explore, right? I do need to get out of here. They're gonna fuck me. With what we were talking about before at Lamp, yeah. Is that's right, is that they're like super fucking misguidedly bigoted, but it's fucking Liberty who fucked them. Oh shit, I got missiled. I gotta run again. I'm having a terrible day of hunting Xenos. The Xenos are beating my ass. I told you it was a Xenos kind of day. Oh! <laughs> okay. Okay, AI. Fair enough. I, you're right. I didn't hit the lane fast enough. You're right. I was a little off on my approach there for the instant dock. They even, like, formation flew through me, through my death cam to really, like, meme on me. Really stunted on me there. Loaded into cargo hold. Loaded into cargo hold. I'm always proud when the AI kills me. I'm always a proud fa father. Red 3-11, this is Planet Denver, docking ring cleared. Good luck out there. Someone says, someone who's more 20% middle of to me should take a bunch of Trump speeches and then cut them up in an NPC voice line. Um, I think we should definitely not do that, but I, I love your enthusiasm. Oops, I hit the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Be Beagle's starting to, like, distance himself from, like, the easy shorthand of calling the Xenos Space Maga because it will inevitably result in, like, people just conflating that one-to-one -one with them. I do not need, like, a player who logs on and it has, like, a Xenos character named, like, Donald Trump 2024 or something. I don't need that. Guys, you- guys, okay, you know, you know, guys, maybe we can draw some parallels, but, you know, like, the Xenos aren't gonna get, like, fucking red baseball caps or anything, you know what I mean? Like, okay, we're not gonna one-to-one -one that shit. That way we can make them like a more interesting faction to deal with. Laura Bush is already in game. <laughs> I forgot! I forgot Laura Bush is in game! I, I was fighting the other day and I, I ran into another private Bush, uh, low boy. I remembered, I did remember Laura Bush actually. Yeah, poor doggo, nothing but a stain on the cup of glass. I, I've been used to what's left of me to grease their ship. No, I ejected, that's why I'm back. Okay, so I know I've been getting bodied, but like, I'm not gonna run into five Xenos this time. I'm gonna run into two or three, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take them out easy. It's not gonna be a problem. My ships just hate me now. Probably they'll hate me until I uh, take the server down up. Maybe I should do that because I want to fly around them. Beam. That's gonna be Denver. Let me just take the server down and up so I can fix that. That's an interesting thing to note that that happens, I guess, if that's what's happening. Because when I restart the server, I doubt they're still gonna be mad at me.
Talosaurus is the next generation of fascists. I'm going to just copy the symbols of the previous generation. Media is a terrible job of teaching us to recognize fascism. And not the symbols of the previous generations of fascism have used. Not copying Margo is a good choice. Yeah, I mean, for, for, for multiple reasons. Also, it'd just, it'd just be tacky. Even if I wanted to, it'd just be tacky. So I would also not do it. I would, I would not. But, like, also, as a writer, if you want to look at it that way in writing this mod's, like, lore and factions and stories, it's also not very interesting because if you make it, like, too obviously, like, a one-to-one -one conflation of a real-life group or, or figure when you're doing writing, it kind of gets to that boring territory if you're like, oh, okay, like, it's just literally them, and it's, like, anything they do or have said in real life, the real life thing you're doing, it's like, okay, well, I guess these guys are that too. And it just becomes, like, a really boring conflation where you can't, like, give any, like, your, your creation fictionally has no, like, space or oxygen to breathe and no air to evolve or change or be different in any interesting ways. <laughs> Jedi. Jesus. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Jedi, that's... That's like the kind of thing you write, and like the NSA actually comes to your house. Thanks for using uh, Twitch.tv slash Beegs and Jam. Yeah, salute, yeah. Th thanks for using my channel. Thanks for choosing us. Um, to uh, have the NSA monitor next. That's great. <laughs> Bye, Jedi. <laughs> we'll remember you. <laughs> oh, I marked the wrong thing. Unmark. Umami. New functionality I'm getting used to called marking. Unless we keep them in my importance tracker. You can always vanish. Yeah, quick, you, you gotta have exclamation mark vanish before the CIA gets you. No, the, the CIA... Uh, Jedi, are you in America? If you're in America, the CIA gets you. If you're in other countries, I think... No, if you're in other countries, the CIA gets you. If you're in America, the NSA is gonna get you. There you go. No one's gonna get you now. You're safe. Here we go, double up. Double up next to the mining ship. I got him. Oh. It's gonna be aggressive. It's gonna hit him hard and fast. Come here, fucko. I have the other missiles. I should, I should use those. This isn't a hard fight, so I don't need to pop my extra missiles yet. I get a bit closer so I can hit easier. I gotta, like, pull some leading turns on him, honestly, and shorten the distance a bit. That's better. Like 200 meters. Now you're fucked. Once you pull that little one. Oh fuck! Okay, getting a little cocky, are we? I'm getting a little cocky. Fire my missiles. So I have three SRMs right now, but only one of them is like a regular one that fires every 12 seconds. The other two are pylon SRMs. They fire every two minutes. So they're like a little bit of burst power there. I just fired like every missile at once to just blow that fucker up. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Panicus says, The Freedom and Liberty Party in the US did just reauthorize invasive surveillance of its own people. It was ever gone. I didn't realize. Whoa. Oh, fuck. She was a bit low. Another Xenos showed up as well. Oh, man. I, I sent them flying with that collision. They're wobbling. I'm gonna keep my shield going. I'm gonna make some distance. I need my shield to go back up. Jedi says, I ironically and harmfully, like, Drew to be, like, hate everything he is done politically, but it's cool he speaks, albeit shitty Spanish, paints and rides bikes, so I think that balances things out. Yeah? Yeah, you, you think the painting balances it out? That's a, that's a good take. <laughs> uh, Molly says, I'm so glad our war criminals are churlish enough to be funny. Yeah, I mean, soul of the earth. No, it balances out me being disappeared. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> Not the war crimes. <laughs> Remember that period of history where, like, Ellen was, like, trying to help rehabilitate George Dub or something? Oh. 
Oh, and then that other bit where George Dub was like doing the speech or whatever place and just basically did like the Mia couple like, whoopsie, we sure fucked up the uh, invasion of Iraq, didn't we? Whoopsie! Like he seriously just like looked in the camera and was like, oh yeah, like that was all bullshit, my bad. Yeah, that was kind of fucked up actually. I mean, like, good on, like, the small half of it to recognize, you know, it was wrong. Bad. That, like, just kind of like a funny little whoopsie joke now, not like a deeply regretful thing to, like, atone for publicly, but, you know. Ricochet says, I'm in Texas and they still won't shut up about the bushes. Hiding in the bushes? Hey, could I, like, kill one of these fuckers? This has been a while. I have not been able to get. I'm gonna switch targets. These two veterans are, like, staying pretty defensive on me. They're playing a, playing a long game, waiting for reinforcements, I think. We're waiting until one of them gets on my tail a bit better, but right now I've got them both mostly in the same direction. This is what I mean, this is what I try to do with the 1v3s. You want them all in the same direction so they pass you and you're not getting hit constantly. You can get like your breathing room, you can get your, your, what would you call it in a fighting game or in like uh, dueling? It's like your, um, your, your, your footwork to, to get your breath in. Exactly, Bounty, the, the downtime between the Joust takes long enough to shoot come back. Exactly, yeah. And they're kind of benefiting from that too here because we're doing these long uh, E-kill Joust past each other. Just kind of working out for them as well. Basically, we're both being kind of, like, defensive. Now, if I was thinking about this... Oh god, I just gave them my ass. I just put them on my six. It's okay, they're still being pretty defensive, not really on me. If I want to finish this fight, I need to stop just shooting blindly, and I need to start using basic fire maneuvers. I need to, like, not shoot to kill. I need to do a lead turn on the back one. But those are dangerous if I do them wrong. So I need to do an, an arcing turn. Like this. And I need to actually get on one of their sixes. And stop just jousting forever. And we're gonna move like this so that we fly in a way that the other one gets their, uh, like, their shot on me kind of trashed. And then we're gonna get the shield down and get up behind them. And we're gonna go both missiles because I'm getting a little hosed by these guys. Didn't need them. And just in time because here comes another reinforcement like they were waiting for. So now I need to do the same thing. Rather than talking about George Bush. I should be focusing on the gameplay, which is good, because that's a good sign. That's how I want the game to be, is you don't just brain dead it. So I'm, that's actually good. I'm always happy when I see my games working out the way I want it to be working. Now I'm going to be careful, I don't want these guys to flank me. Again, we're trying to corral them with our movements, so that they are always turning on me away. Oh, that's too many! Kill one, kill one! Never mind, go aggro, go aggro. I need to kill this one so I can take four. I can't take five. Kill, 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 kill. They're coming! I need to kill this fucker before the shield comes back up or I'm, I'm hosed. Come on, get some hits in. One more hit. No! No, oh, what the fuck? Why are there so many? What? Hit, hit the fucking crews. There's so many. <laughs> no, they're trapping me. Oh my god, where's the nearest? Mining ship, get to the mining ship. Oh, there's so many Zenos. Oh, fuck! Go, oh, fuck! Evade, keep my shield up! Every every dodged hit helps here to keep my shield regen. Whoa! This is gonna sat around for too long, this is my own fault. Ah! Oh my god! I gotta turn into them! I'm taking too much fire of them all on my ass. Oh fuck! Okay, now turn again. Try to snake past them, lose them and get to the mining ship for defense. Holy fuck! Yeah, it is like kitchen in space. Mining ship, help me! Okay, we're just gonna do donuts around the mining ship for, for cover and also to, like, get them off me. Oh, I just flew into their guns again! Get the fuck off me! I ain't gonna make this! Ah! There's, like, seven of them! <laughs> and I haven't buffed the mining ship's guns yet, so I can't really kill them! Fuck! That was fun when I was on the Xenos, but... Ugh.
That's our cue to buff their guns, I think. That's, that's, I said I was gonna do a bit of fighting and then maybe do some work. I think that's our cue to make their guns better, don't you think? <laughs> it's, uh, there's still that random element, which is good. I don't want to get rid of that. We, I got a lot more control over the spawning system. From how it used to be, it was just like you constantly got swarmed all the time. It was annoying. Um, so like, for example, when I was playing this morning or in general, generally like, like, it'll be like, okay, kill two, have enough time to get in ahead of things before the next spawn comes, kill two, kill two, and it's less likely to spawn more as you're already engaged, but not impossible. And in that case, I fucked around too long talking about George Bush, um, when I should have been killing fast. And I ended up kind of letting the patrols, the, the spawns stack up on me, essentially. And, uh, oh man, that, um, cause that's the thing, if you're already engaged, you can't run. If I had killed those two quicker, if I had used my brain and started using BFM and engaging better earlier, I would have been unengaged, so I could have seen the five coming and hit my hit my crews and got out of there. But because they're on me, they crews disrupt me, and then they tackle me for the others to show up. And uh, that is not good. Slayer says, so what's the main changes for B-Mod? Um, tons, sorry. Um, you're a freelancer, player in general. Uh, ton, tons of stuff already. Um, it, it, way, way fucking better AI enemies. PvE is a big focus of the mod. Um, the, the, the flight model, if you want to call it that, we've t tweaked hugely. Uh, thrusters are not really a thing anymore. A lot more, like, jet turning as well as you killing, though. No, you never played No More Freelancer? Oh, you just like Curious, then. Um, exclamation mark B-Mod has the summary description, I think. We're basically just trying to... We love this game. Just make this game into as modernized and fun as possible with, like, modern design thought, balance, you know, experience of other games we like. I'm just trying to make this the most fun, modern space sim possible. Um, love it. Space, space. Is sim the right word for freelancer, I guess? Space RPG, space. What do you call it if it's not a sim? Because it's not really, like, it's not realistic. Can you call a game a sim if it's not realistic? Like, it's a simulation in the sense that, like, it's got like a full-on world, trading, traders going around, doing their own things. A space them up. Wolf says, hey Beagle, is there some way I can convince you to give Vowertrum a look? I think you really enjoy it. I probably would, I saw you say that before, sorry. But, not right now. I'm like busy with too many things I want to do right now, if that makes sense. But maybe in the future with like a bunch of friends. The quickest way I'd probably play it is like with people, like... Like if Bear Bananas was like, you want to play Vowertrum this weekend? I'd be like, okay. I'd make, I'd make time, you know, to play my new friends. So probably with you, Wolf, and like some of the others I played Helldivers with, like, if I... It's just being forced to do it. Because if Bed asked me, I'm like, still new friends of Bed, so I'd, I'd be like, you know, oh, cool, Bed, thanks for inviting me. I will accept that immediately. Um, you know, because I want to show that I appreciate being asked. Um, but like, I'm not going to go out of my way to be like, okay, Sammy, you, me, and Wolf are going to play Barrow Trauma this weekend. You know, you guys have to actually, like, make me do it. So he says, get in line, Total War is next in FTL Multiverse. See, there's a, there's a queue. <laughs> there's a queue. Karma says, would you say that, like, in Star Sector, you want a simulated galaxy? Like, legit, like, like a legit question for, like... That, that's kind of how Freelancer works. Sort of? I mean... So, so you mean more than aesthetically. You mean, like, actually simulated in ways that are track. It's, it's tough, because... Vanilla Freelancer doesn't do that a ton... Like, there isn't all these cool systems in Freelancer free of, like, like genuine, like, um, supply and demand and economy. Like, a lot of it is, like, what you see in front of you is more what's going on. Until you get in the multiplayer, then things, you know, are happening all around the system. Uh, um, but we can kind of improve that by, inc by making new systems. Like, there are Freelancer servers that have a dynamic supply and demand economy uh, in multiplayer based on mods and plugins. And that's really cool. But, you know, we're, we're picking our poison. You know? We're picking what we work on and prioritize as a small team. Um... You know, and we're not doing that anytime soon, but eventually, yeah. As long as it's not, like, unnecessary simulation just for the sake of, like, being realistic, I love that kind of shit. I love to have, and as long as it doesn't bloat the server performance, I do love to have, um, more simulation, more living, breathing world, especially multiplayer. Love that, of course. Nexerlin and Freelancer would rule TBH. I do want that eventually as, a, like, a, a dream feature that we get to work on, like in the mid to, to long term future is some kind of faction war yeah where like you're you're doing like hell divers where okay let's say you know these four systems okay let's say you know Rhineland owns this one Brett owns this one Kusari owns this one and Liberty owns this one this is super earth and then you go to Colorado and Kusari is like invading Colorado right and then you have like you know five different nodes or like 
That's simple, like, five different capture the flag nodes, and who owns the majority is, like, VP ticking over, like, the course of days, like, the Galactic War, who's gonna get the control of the system, and then we flip, you know, meaningfully what NPCs are here, what's going on contextually based on that, and players, of course, wouldn't assist that. But more interestingly than that would be, like, um, do legit, like, Helldivers inspiration style, where it's, like, instead of it just being capture the flag nodes you own, it's, like, okay, over the course of this next week, during this invasion, um, missions are gonna pop all over Colorado, and maybe even in surrounding systems, and if you do these missions, you're gonna t tilt things one way or the other. Like, maybe if you protect the Liberty Navy convoy from New York to Colorado of supplies, um, you will make the defense ticker for Colorado for the Navy go up. But if you destroy the convoy, or if the convoy is destroyed, you're making the ticker go down, or it doesn't go up, you know, for Liberty, that kind of thing, you know? Like, that incremental progress. That could be really fun. Um, it's a, it'd be a massive undertaking, technically, to make, but it is possible. Um, so, you know, if we are doing well, in the future, if we are a healthy, alive mod, and they, we warrant with a player base, we warrant that kind of tech, I'd love to work on it. That'd be so cool. Love to do that. And that is about when, I think that kind of scope would be about when player-driven capital ships would be starting to become more of a thing that actually has a place, because they would be something that'd be very good for holding ground and doing big objectives. Like, you want to destroy a base, bring a capital ship, you know? Because I never want to have capital ships in this game that just exist just to be cool. Like, oh, I'm just fly a, a fighter, but it's slower and has more guns and has 10,000 times the HP. That's just stupid. You want to have, like, actual roles for capital ships that are very, very, very different gameplay to fighters. And you don't want to just put them in for the sake of it. Um, I'm going to make a weapon for the mining ships, I feel like. What am I going to do? I'm going to give them... I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try a twofer here. I'm going to try to buff their turrets to be good and I'm gonna try to give them uh, effective missile launchers for defense let's try and do that so this is me that's me what's you being being the transport convoy 